Alright, so originally I was not planning on doing any latency testing on the smartphone setups uh, with the open IPC uh, video transmitters that I got, but I, after I flew the uh, Tiny Hawk here, uh, Tiny Hawk 3 Freestyle, you know, while I was flying around I was kind of giving you my narration live in the moment, and I was like, well, I wasn't sure if it was necessarily the latency. I knew there was some latency there because obviously you're flying through a smartphone screen, but I thought it was because I was flying through a smartphone screen and that was the reason why I felt uncomfortable. But, and the more and more I thought about it, I thought it, the latency seemed higher than normal. And so the phone I flew it through was this one here. This is the Oppo Find X. This was sent by Emacs. Uh, with the package to do this testing and I decided to do latency testing on this particular phone and compare it to the Google Pixel 2 that I showed in one of my original videos and my S22 Ultra and this one is capable of 60 Hertz and 120 Hertz so I did two tests there and I'll just explain the testing methodology here I am using a Sony ZV-1 um, that ha has a high frame rate mode for 1000 frames per second and this is how I am able to determine the latency numbers and so then what I'm doing here is I have this little button with these LEDs it's like a battery meter I press the button the LEDs turn on shines into the camera here and then I see the image show up here um, on the smartphone screen and then I just count up the frames to find out how many milliseconds of latency there is so Surprisingly, this phone, which has a better uh, Snapdragon processor than the Pixel 2, had a much worse latency number than the Pixel 2. It was 78 milliseconds of latency on this phone, and I got 60 milliseconds latency on the Google Pixel 2. These are both 60 hertz screens, different types of screen technology. I did notice that it seems like the whatever the screen driver is on this phone seems to redraw the whole screen at once versus this does some sort of scanning method and I counted the latency based on the um, full image being presented versus a partial image so the numbers are probably a little bit higher versus say like a you know first pixel image or whatever something like that that other probably testers have done so the latency numbers I'm telling you are basically full image you know you get the full image and then that, that's the number I count. And well, I'll talk about this some more. I also tested my S22 Ultra in 60 hertz and I also got about 60 milliseconds of latency. And in 120 hertz I got about 51 milliseconds of latency. So that's the best result that I've seen in terms of smartphone testing. So I'm going to be flying through this, at least the drone stuff on this one here. Just for comparison, I want to show you this, um, you know, this here. This is a walk snail avatar VRX with a five and a half inch uh, TFT HDMI display. I did do a test with that and uh, walk snail 1S uh, VTX. And that one gave, gives me about 55 milliseconds of latency. Now, it's pretty well known that the walk snail uh, VRX has about, an, about 10 milliseconds of additional latency from the HDMI um, encoding that goes out. And then this particular display isn't a super fast display, it's a 60 hertz display. And it is, um, I think it adds about 5 to 7 additional milliseconds of latency. So that's why you're seeing that 55 milliseconds of latency number from that. Just to give you sort of a sort of comparison on this same sort of test. Now, I, I was wondering why I was getting so much more latency on this Oppo, and <laughs> I think I should just show you. You can see here, it's a, it's a this is a Chinese phone, and it has uh, Chinese firmware on here. So it's, uh, the operating system is Android based, but it is all um, based in whatever China. I did have to change it to English to be able to you know, read stuff, 
Uh, but this has a lot of like, I don't know, stuff that runs in the background. I don't know what it is. And I tried disabling it, but I couldn't. Um, I don't really, I'm not really, this is an Android based OS, but a lot of the stuff that I tried to do on this phone that I did on the Google doesn't work. Uh, I'm still trying to figure that out. But I think that's why I'm having extra latency in this one. On my, my Pixel, I have like almost all of the background processes disabled and I have very little, this is not my main daily driver phone. This is like a phone I use for testing. So it doesn't have a lot of stuff installed. And so that's why I think that's why the Google is faster even though it's got a slower Snapdragon than the Oppo. And there's a lot of extra junk going on. So like I did like multiple tests. So the numbers I told you are like average numbers. The the I guess the I don't know what you call it, the standard deviation or whatever the spread of the numbers on the Google were more narrow narrowly around the sixty milliseconds of latency. Whereas on this Oppo, I would get some really high numbers, sometimes like 120, 130 milliseconds, and then some a little bit lower, you know, in the 50 to 60 milliseconds. Uh, so it was kind of bouncing around and kind of a wider range. And then uh, the average was around 78 milliseconds. So I think it's because there's stuff running on this phone that I can't turn off. And that is interfering with the um, decoding of the Im video image. So I'm not gonna be using this phone anymore for flying. I'm gonna be switching to the S22 Ultra, but I just wanted to share my findings here. Uh, some people were posting some ridiculous comments, which I deleted. Uh, no, I'm not, I was not being paid by DJI to not test the system for latency. That's ridiculous. Uh, why would, I mean, if, if they're paying me, why am, I not re why am I not reviewing any of their latest products? I mean, come on, it's ridiculous. They, they released a bunch of the latest products and I haven't gotten any of them. So that is just dumb. Um, no one's paying me to not test this latency. It's just that I already knew the results of this beforehand. I knew that going to the phone is going to add probably an additional minimum 20 to 30 milliseconds of latency or more. And most people aren't going to be able to fly through that. Most people complain when they see 40 milliseconds of latency which you're gonna, you're gonna see in first generation DJI. So I already knew that testing the latency in the phone was kind of pointless. Now, I am gonna test more latency later once I get my uh, ground station and goggle setup going. I finally got one of these. This is that Ratsa 03W, it's like a Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna make a ground station with this one. It is not easy, it looked like, well, uh, if you're not an engineer, it's probably gonna be pretty challenging. You can go and that page and check it out. It was like 20 steps to get this going. Um, but you know, there's additional HDMI latency anyway. And this, even if I can get this to a goggle, it's just eventually what I want to fly, but just wanted to share my results. Surprisingly that this is not that bad. And it's uh, about the same as the S22 Ultra in 60 Hertz mode. But I think for flying purposes, you, I think you're gonna to wanna to get uh, the latest Snapdragon processor with a 120 Hertz display. Um, the S22 is like two or three years old. I think if you go with uh, like an S24 or something that's more high end, that 51 milliseconds latency would probably go down to like 45-ish. That's Then that is what the open IPC developers are kind of telling everyone that the latency is. Um, it's probably gonna be less even over goggles, but if you have like the very best Android hardware and decoding hardware um, and the best uh, uh, highest refresh rate screens, of course, this is very expensive, then you get the best performance, obviously. You pay more, you get better performance. Kind of obvious, uh, you know, I, 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 I figured that everyone just kind of knew this, but I, I guess I have to make a video to show that I tested it and to prove that my assumptions were correct. And you know, I, I proved that one of my assumptions was incorrect, that just because you have better Snapdragon hardware doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna get better performance in terms of latency, because uh, if the Snapdragon hardware is running a bunch of other crap in the background, you know, whatever's going on with these Chinese phones, who knows? Um, then yeah, you're gonna get worse performance and that's exactly what I proved in this video. So hopefully this helps. Uh, if you've got this uh, system and you're using a smartphone and you're wondering why the latency is so bad, 
try and kill all your background processes, um, uninstall applications you're not using, uh, stuff like that. You know, just, just, just kill everything that you don't need so that you get the maximum performance out of the phone. And then uh, if you have a choice of phones, go for phones that um, have 120 hertz displays or better. I know there's ones out there that are like 240 or whatever, or 280. So yeah, obviously the, the more the better, of course, in terms of performance, you're gonna get better uh, latency performance with a better screen. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Give it a thumbs up if you did, like it, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.